that's ridiculous for a country that's so rich. And, you know, if you turn the problem upside down and say, well, how can we reduce those deaths from air pollution? How can we reduce uh, energy poverty? How can we reduce these soaring costs that we're seeing at the moment? The answer is actually moving away from fossil fuels and the core benefit of almost a coincidence of doing the things that you need to do to address climate change is really good for society. So reducing emissions means increasing well-being and welfare for people. If you're living in a damp house, you know, with kids, you know, young kids in a damp house and you're heating it with with solid fuel or, or with, with poor quality timber or with, with you know, expensive kerosene or whatever, that's not good for, for you mentally or physically in the home. You know, you might, you know, you're, you're, you're struggling with, 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 with health solutions or with missing days off work. So giving people dignified living conditions where you live in a house that doesn't cost a fortune to eat, that is cozy, uh, good quality air, good quality ventilation. That's a really good thing for the person in the house. It's good for the planet. And also there's huge employment opportunities here as well. One of the other problems when you import so much energy into this country, we've so few people working in energy uh, in this country. Okay, look, the three of us are on the table are, but you know, if you look at countries like uh, uh, like France or Norway, where, you know, huge swathes of the population are working in the energy sector. And that's an opportunity that Ireland has missed because we've outsourced that, that those employment opportunities to the co- countries that we, imp- we import from. So when I think about all the problems that we're looking at today, I think about solutions. We know what the solution is, but that solution will lead to many other benefits, you know, so increased business opportunities, employment, better air quality, better opportunities for farmers, which we'll talk about later. So, and in many ways, when you step back at it and, you, you know, there's been a resistance, I suppose, over the last couple of years, people saying, well, climate action is expensive and we don't want to do it. But we now know that climate inaction is more expensive and it's something that we have to do. And financial stress has so much impact on the quality of people's lives. It really does. And I guess it is a huge concern for people who are experiencing financial stress that those who are in power are shielded from a lot of those stresses and don't know what what that feels like. And, uh, you know, I suppose when we then look at energy is at the source of so many of the drivers behind our cost of living. So energy is behind food production, energy is behind um, the construction industry, energy is behind um, our ability to heat our homes, etc. So if we tackle energy, we make it renewable from low cost renewable sources. It isn't just the energy we're tackling. I guess that's the key point that you're making, right? Is that it's not just the energy we're tackling, it's all aspects because the objective here is to enhance quality of life. Exactly. Uh, I I think even just on that topic, you know, to put a tangible example of it in place. And uh, back in 2013, we were involved with one of the local authorities in retrofitting an entire fuel poor, you know, heavily populated uh, social housing scheme in Kilkenny, one of the oldest schemes built in the country. Um, and 250 meters away was the, the medical center. You know, so um, you know, in the discussion, a lot of the houses retrofit to a very high energy standard uh, back in 2013. You know, you could visibly see number one, the people were more comfortable with you know a better standard of living in terms of quality of home and comfort. That's obvious. But in real terms, uh, many of those would have been in uh, possession of um, medical cards, and therefore. Know, would have had free access to medical care and therefore up and down to their local GP very regular basis, you know. And immediately it was identified just straight after that that their number of visits per year had reduced. So if you just, you know, factor that up as an individual basis per citizen, the cost of, you know, that medical insurance, medical costs around medical cards and so on and so forth. I mean, that money alone, if it was rerouted, you know, save it and reroute it or, you know, the natural effect of, you know, more comfort, less coughs, less colds. Um, I mean, we can become a very effective, efficient society with, you know, the best of healthcare. We're constantly hearing in the media about the cost of healthcare. The reality is a lot of what we're talking about comes from that energy that we're speaking, yeah. um, or lack of it, yeah. or um, poor use of it. And maybe one of the things you've seen, Paddy, like what I suppose, and this comes, it's a, it's a, it's a thing I've, I've always struggled with when it comes to climate change and how we talk about it and how we communicate it. And the problem comes from kind of my side of the house on the, the scientific academic side. We tell people it's about the planet, but actually, it, yes, it is. But it, it's actually about people. You know, it's about improving people's lives. And I think, and we're, we're kind of like a broken record in many regards when it comes to climate change. And we talk about, you know, and all the stuff that's true and real, but, you know, like like uh, melting ice sheets and, and the planet. But it's difficult for most people to make tangible connections with that. You know, but as Paddy said, if you're talking about the neighbor down the road who's burning 
cold or peat and it's going out into the air and you walk past a house, you take a big mouthful of air, of, of, of dirty air comes into your lungs. They are problems that we can all relate to and they're local, they're relevant and they're the things that get us socially and politically motivated, you know, and they're very helpful, you know, uh, and I think talking about climate change in a way that's relevant for other people is a very helpful thing and moving away from and it's not that the narrative isn't true. It, it is true. You know, the climate change is a huge problem for the planet and for the uh, ice caps and glaciers and all of this. But talking about stuff that people can relate to, you know, we know that talking about climate change in that way for the last 30 years isn't working. Emissions are rising and people just feel disempowered. So you know, talking about people is, real, is, is a real uh, important part of that solution as well.